In a world chasing billion-dollar fighters, one small jet quietly came within inches of rewriting history. Canada's competition was almost over. The pressure from allies was intense. The F-35 looked unstoppable. And yet, for a brief moment, Sweden's gripe in E stood so close to victory that even Canadian officials whispered the same. Question, what if this jet had just one more upgrade? Because the truth is simple. There was one missing piece. One upgrade that would have changed everything. One decision that might have handed Sweden the biggest fighter deal in its history. And the world would be talking about a very different winner today. To understand how close the gripen came, you have to understand the moment. The planet wasn't calm. Russia was moving aggressively. NATO was preparing for a new age of air combat. The United States was pushing for a united front built around the F-35 and every nation, especially those with long borders like Canada, needed jets that could survive real war. Not just look good on a brochure, that's where Sweden shocked everyone. The Gripen arrived not as a giant, but as the underdog with a heavy punch. Light, fast, reliable, and surprisingly intelligent. It could land on icy roads, refuel in minutes, and operate without the huge support structure other jets demanded. In a world of high-maintenance hours and massive logistics chains, the Gripen acted like a soldier who never got tired dot, but in the fight for Canada's skies. Being smart wasn't enough. Being efficient wasn't enough. Being cheaper, adaptable, and easier to operate still wasn't enough. Because this deal wasn't just about performance dot, it was about one thing Canada couldn't ignore long-range Arctic defense, and this is where the story turns, when Canada began the fighter search. Experts laughed at the idea of Sweden competing. Critics said the Gripen was too small, to lightweight, to European. But after the first evaluations, that laughter died down. Canadian pilots noticed things others ignored. The Gripen eased cold weather performance. Its simple maintenance. Its quick turnaround time. Its ability to survive without luxurious shelters. It wasn't pretending to be a superstar. It was acting like a worker, one built for Canada's harsh north. Then came the real shock. During simulated intercepts and exercises, the Gripen E showed off its advanced electronic warfare system. Pilots compared it to a ghost. Hard to track. Hard to lock. Hard to beat. It used information better than heavier jets. It didn't overpower enemies, it outsmarted them. Defense insiders admitted privately that the Gripen was performing above expectations. Some said it felt like the jet was reading the battlefield with a kind of quiet intelligence. The jet didn't scream for attention. It simply stayed ahead. At one point, a Canadian pilot joked, It's like this thing is cheating, and for the first time, the F-35 wasn't the only favorite. The Gripen he had carved the real path to the top. But that path had a cliff, because Canada's biggest challenge wasn't dogfighting or stealth. It was distance. The Arctic is brutal, empty, endless. A fighter jet in Canada needs the stamina of a marathon runner, not just the punch of a sprinter. It needs range, lots of it. Enough to patrol the north, respond to intrusions, and survive long missions without support. This is where the F-35, despite all its weaknesses, had one powerful advantage. It came with a large, integrated long-range weapon that Canada needed for Arctic defense. The American-made long-range missile that could strike from far distances, the Gripen E didn't. This was the turning point. Quiet, subtle, but decisive, behind closed doors. Canadian officials didn't complain about Sweden's technology. They didn't doubt the Gripen's performance. They didn't question its ability to operate in cold weather. They admired all of that. What they hesitated on was simple, long-range deterrence. A jet could be brilliant, but if it couldn't reach far intruders before they reached Canadian territory, it didn't matter. Sweden offered modern missiles. Great ones but not the one Canada specifically needed for its Arctic strategy. Not the one that matched NORAD's long-range requirements. Not the one that would integrate perfectly with the North American defense architecture. And Sweden knew this. Saab quietly proposed an idea that could have changed everything. An upgrade. A specific missile integration that would have given the Gripen E the exact capability Canada wanted. A long-range strike option that would put it on equal footing with the F-35 and Arctic defense. It wasn't fantasy. It wasn't impossible. It was practical, achievable, and absolutely within Sweden's engineering skill. But it required time. Time Sweden didn't have. Canada's deadline was fixed. The political pressure was intense. The United States pushed hard for a decision. And while Sweden offered cooperation, joint development, and custom integration, Canada needed a jet ready now, not later, so the Gripen stood there, capable, 
Tough, low cost, and perfect for Canada in almost every way. Almost. The F-35 won because it arrived with long-range weapons. Canada didn't need to spend years integrating. Not because it was cheaper. Not because it was easier to maintain. Not because pilots preferred it. But because it came with the one capability the Gripen-E was still working toward. That was the upgrade. The one thing Sweden needed, a long-range air-to-air missile. Integrated and ready, had Saab delivered that system earlier. Had that upgrade been completed two years sooner, the outcome would have been very different, some Canadian defense. Officials even said this privately. If the Gripeny had long-range integration ready, this competition would have looked completely different, in simple words. The Gripeny didn't lose because of performance, it lost because of timing. And that's the part most people never hear. Saab wasn't offering a weak jet. It was offering a modern fighter that could take off from snowy roads, use cheap maintenance, and fly missions daily without collapsing under its own complexity. It could survive electronic warfare better than jets twice its price. It could adapt faster. It could operate with tiny ground crews. It could rely on local maintenance instead of foreign. Politics. It was everything Canada wanted for daily. Operations. Just not everything Canada needed for strategic. Deterrence. Now here's the twist. Most viewers never expect, after the competition ended, Sweden continued the upgrade process anyway. New long-range missile integration marched forward. The Gripen E, within a short time, gained exactly the type of capability Canada once required. The upgrade arrived, but the door had already closed. This is the painful irony of military deals. The right technology at the wrong time is the same as having no technology at all. If the Gripen E had rolled into Canada's evaluation with long-range deterrence ready on day one, the political pressure surrounding the F-35 wouldn't have been enough to bury Sweden's. Chances, the Gripen could have won, not maybe, not possibly, but, realistically, Saab's fighter was designed for countries that needed independence, flexibility, and survival. It fit Canada's geography better. It fit Canada's climate better. It fit Canada's budget better. And pilots genuinely liked flying it. The only thing missing was the one upgrade that turned the competition from a fair fight into a predictable ending. Now, Fast forward to the aftermath. The Gripen E continues to impress nations around the world. Brazil flies it in a way Canada would have loved. NATO members re examine its value. Countries tired of political pressure take interest. Analysts who once dismissed it now call it one of the smartest fighters ever built. Meanwhile, Canada deals with the F 35's long maintenance times, high cost, and fragile systems. A jet that is powerful, yes, but one that demands constant support. One that cannot operate from Canada's small forward bases without extensive preparation. One that still struggles in environments the Gripen handles with. Ease. It's hard not to look back and imagine another WO or LDA world where Sweden had the upgrade. Ready. A world where the underdog walked away with a major victory, a world where Canada became the first major Western nation to choose the Gripen E over the F 35. That future existed. It was real. It was close. But it slipped away because one piece arrived just a little too late. In military history, moments like this matter. Not because they change the past, but because they change how nations think. The Gripen E has become the fighter that made Canada question the obvious choice. The jet that forced analysts to rethink range, survivability, and economics. The one that proved intelligence can compete with raw power. And maybe that's the greatest twist of all. Sweden didn't build the biggest jet. It didn't build the loudest. It built a fighter so smart that one missing upgrade became the only thing standing between it and a historic victory dot in a sky full of giants. It's the smallest details that decide who wins dot and sometimes the smallest jet comes closest of all.